couldn't think. Sorry. Yeah, please. So I'm really happy to introduce Maya Seashell. Maya is a student in my freshwater biology class last fall. And she participated in an exercise that I like to use in order to understand what is the consensus on a particular topic in freshwater biology. Many of us think about that you have to have repeatability in science, and we think about running multiple trials, but repeatability also comes from what do scientists agree on. Also, this allows us to understand what are the data gaps when we have openings in what is not known in science. And so our students get a really nice literature view about a topic of interest. And so Maya did a fantastic job and agreed to present this to you. So take your lights. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon. So my topic for this presentation was a comprehensive overview um, for water quality on the effects of freshwater fish. So during this presentation, or this research project, we had to gather 35 scientific literature review papers. And during this, I used Google Scholar, which I just used keywords, water quality and freshwater fish. And we compiled the papers for uh, Wiley Online and Science Direct. And after we did all of that, we uploaded them onto RedWorks. Uh, the information was taken from all of the literature articles and then divided into research methodologies, uh, water quality categories or factors, and then freshwater fish health and the variables. After that is when we put them into Excel to make all of our pie graphs. So up at the top are figures 1A, B, and C, and these are just the research methodologies for all 35 papers up at the top. Um, and the overall consensus is that deductive lab was used the majority of the time for the uh, during the articles. For figure 1B, water quality factors, for all 35 papers, heavy metals was the number one factor. For figure 1C, for fish variables, uh, mortality was the biggest uh, result for fish health. We took the water quality factors and went a step further. So for each of the papers that involved one of the factors, we determined how many um, of the research methodologies were used for each paper. So for heavy metals, there were only 16 papers out of the 35 papers. So out of the, 30, the 16 papers, deductive lab was used the most, and for the overall health of the fish, it was showed that mortality and bioaccumulation ended up being 42% for both of those. So those were the highest rates. For pesticides and for fertilizers, they actually ended up being the same when it came to research method methodologies, for it being a deductive lab at 60%. So for figure B on pesticides, it was actually showed that bioaccumulation ended up being the highest factor for fish health. And then for fertilizers, it was mortality that ended up being the highest. So that was the difference between pesticides and fertilizers. Both of those ended up being five papers each. For microplastics, there were 11 papers out of the 35, and deductive lab was still the number one uh, research methodology for those papers. And then for the fish health, it was bioaccumulation that ended up being the highest instead of mortality rates. The reason I chose this topic is actually pretty simple. I just like fish, but also just because of the, um, the health problems that are all around the world on a global scale because we eat those fish. And so basically this research actually revealed the correlation that water systems are like heavily impacted um, affect the freshwater fish and that actually causes health problems for us when we eat them. Uh, and then the state of the science is uh, that on this assessment is one of the key areas of research in freshwater systems and a lot of research still needs to be done to show the actual impacts that are all around the ecosystem of these water, uh, freshwater systems. 
And these are just pictures to show um, the variables. So this is pesticides, they're kind of hard to see. This is heavy metals that were accumulated. These are microplastics, and these are fertilizers. This is just a picture to show mortality of fish. Um, this is actually a physical abnormality. This is just a, a figure to show by a bioaccumulation in a water system. And these are the rest of the research methodologies that we used from our textbook that we went off of. So this just um, showed a survey that was actually a picture I took over the summer. This is empirical research, and this is a laboratory hypothesis testing. Thanks. Thank you. Do you have any questions for the speakers? So I have one quick question. So how many uh, papers are included in this study? 35. 35, okay. And did you use Google Scholar? Yes. Yeah, that's why I included the screenshot right here that actually has both oh, yeah. words of water awesome. quality and freshwater fish. Awesome, thank you. Um, which particular area of the world did you ever found most papers research? Um, actually, a majority were in Asia and Europe. So a lot, actually, um, at first when I started to do this and I chose this topic, I tried to keep it in America, but there actually weren't enough papers for that, so I had to make it on like a global scale. And a lot ended up being in Asia and Europe. So after doing this research, what would you say is the single most important thing to do to protect um, freshwater fish? Um, honestly, I feel like, so one thing I, I did read some of the papers, and a lot of it was we had different, like in different countries, so for us, as an example, we put more emphasis on actually having healthy water systems compared to Asia that has um, their level of th what they consider healthy is a lot higher for heavy metals and stuff like that. Um, so I feel like if we could all come together and actually like make a plan of what's acceptable um, for just us and actual water systems, that would help a lot because in different areas, we're kind of all over the place on what we consider what's actually healthy. Um, so an example of that, I don't know if y'all heard about like the mercury problem from uh, Japan where one of their water systems ended up being so heavily like filled with <coughs> heavy metals that it ended up killing over 100 people because they were drinking that water and eating those fish that were heavy in mercury. Did you do just based on what you said? I get the impression that the U.S. has the best water quality system. Is that correct? Based on this? Yeah, from all of the papers that I looked at, we seem to be the best at keeping our water systems healthier compared to everyone else. What was the most surprising thing that you learned? Uh, the most surprising thing, honestly, is just going back to Dr. Triplett's question of just how we consider what is healthy water compared to other countries. And that was like the biggest thing that I saw um, because just the microplastics that we actually consume that we don't realize um, just in different areas and stuff like that was actually really surprising. All right, if no more questions, let's thank our speaker.